Welcome to the program. I'm Mark Imperial. This segment's being brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their practices, and to leave a legacy. I'm doing a series of spotlights on remarkable advisors from across the country. And joining me on this segment is Grant Bledsoe. He's the founder of Three Oaks Wealth. Grant, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. Tell us a little bit about your work and specifically, who are the types of clients that you specialize in helping? Sure. So my work is financial planning focused. I own and operate, as you mentioned, Three Oaks Wealth, which is an independent fee-only RIA. Uh, we're out in the Sacramento area. <clears throat> and our focus is on helping uh, owners of closely held business businesses. So smaller, uh, a lot of family businesses, anywhere between you know, two to really 50 employees is kind of our sweet spot. And what I found over the years is that there is just a huge opportunity to help people align what's going on in their business with what's going on in their personal lives. And for most business owners out there, they spend so much time focusing on the day-to-day -day of, of running the shop, whatever that means to them. They don't focus a whole lot on their personal finances. And in most scenarios, the two are so intertwined that they're really difficult to, to parse out. So we focus on planning. We help people organize their personal and their business cash flow, minimize taxes, make sure the qualified plan is helping them save on taxes and prepare themselves for the future and then grow the value of their enterprise to where when it's time to exit, they can do it on their terms when they want to and, and get a reasonable amount for it. So it, it's been um, it's been an interesting Right. I've, I've, I've had the, the firm open for almost eight years now. We opened in uh, 2014. And prior to that, I was uh, in the institutional uh, trading and portfolio management world at Charles Schwab. Yes. So these business owners, unless their business is financial planning, they don't need a second career in figuring that out. So what are the like big, you know, 10,000 foot view challenges that business owners had? You mentioned one of them being their finances are all intertwined and messed up. What are some other big concerns that that uh, that you see and, and that you hear from people when they when they come reach out to you? One of the big ones that I see is lack of succession planning and family planning. And, and if you think that you have uh, maybe like a, a single owner of a business, they have this enterprise from you know any number of employees really. If you have any kind of stable cash flow, that's probably worth something. And that doesn't mean that you know you can turn around tomorrow and sell it to another person or another entity or another company or go public or anything like that. It just means that that, that cash flow and that client base, whatever it is that you do is probably worth something. And that means that if you get hit by a bus, it's probably gonna be pretty challenging for your family and your beneficiaries to recoup the value of whatever that's worth. And this is something that always gets pushed to the bottom of the to-do list of entrepreneurs. Nobody ever wants to talk about their own exit from the business because it's just uncomfortable, right? Nobody plans for that kind of thing, but if you die prematurely, if you're disabled, and even you know, if, if retirement for you is not for 10 or 20 or 30 years down the road, good planning around this concept is good business planning in general. It increases the, the value of, of your enterprise because it takes risk off the table uh, for any potential successor. And there are so many you know, shapes and forms of that. It could be an employee uh, or a manager or a third party or maybe another complementary business that you kind of compete with in your market. You know, there are all sorts of these arrangements, but um, I, I, I think it's an area that is hugely important that is often underappreciated. This recent pandemic has created a whirlwind of new question marks out there. I'm wondering in your industry, has this pandemic changed any of the advice you give out, strategies, or just concerns from your prospects and clients? What are you hearing out there? I don't know that it's changed our strategies or our philosophies. It, it's kind of, uh, strengthened our position in in a lot of uh, a lot of different ways and and one example of that is you know I, I think of, of financial planning as a process that helps you do the best you can with what you have it helps you put the pieces of the puzzle together to where your finances are all 
aligned, pointing you toward where it is you want to go in life. So yes, you have the nuts and bolts and the math of dollars in, dollars out and your investments and taxes and all that stuff, but it's much more personal than that. And the first step in, in any prudent financial planning process, I would say, is uh, an evaluation of your cash flow. How much do you have coming in each month? How much are you spending? And what do you have left over? And it sounds kind of benign, you know, for a lot of, I think a lot of uh, financial professionals like to focus on the uh, more ornate uh, tax planning and investment kind of stuff. This cash flow exercise is fundamental to everybody in every walk of life, right? And the first part of any prudent process, in my opinion, is what do you have coming in? What do you have going out? How much is left over? And how large should your emergency fund be? Right. This is the very first thing we got to do when creating any financial plan. How much cash do you have set aside for a rainy day? And so prior to the pandemic, to answer your question directly, you know, typically we recommend some anywhere between six and 24 months worth of living expenses, just liquid in an emergency fund for a rainy day. And over the years, I gotten a fair amount of pushback on that because stock markets are going crazy. There's this cool cryptocurrency stuff that your cousin's making money on hand over fist. And it's not fun to keep all this cash locked up in an account earning next to nothing because interest rates are low. After having gone through the pandemic, I can't tell you how many of our business owner clients are exceptionally thankful that they, even though they pushed back, they took the advice and that really helped them weather the storm. We have no idea what's going to happen. And the worst thing that we can do from, you know, a, a growth of wealth standpoint is sell securities at an inconvenient time when the markets are down. And this cash reserve just gives you a little bit more runway, a little bit more flexibility to weather the storm when times are a little bit tur turbulent. Terrific. I mean, you, you mentioned that solid foundation but business owners, they don't know what they don't know. In this age of like information overload out there and people Googling everything, do you find a common, any common sort of myths or misconceptions um, around people's finances, especially business owners? What have you heard out there that kind of business owners keep repeating? Hmm. Uh, good question. One one kind of technical thing that I hear over and over again is is a lot of our because of the size of businesses that we serve, you know, maybe two to fifty employees. Most of them are organized as S corporations, and in an S corporation, it's a pass through business entity, meaning that the business files its own tax return. You have revenue at the top of your income statement. You have expenses, and then you have profits left over. You're supposed to pay yourself a reasonable W-2 wage for your efforts in the business. And that comes out as an expense. But anything that comes out at the bottom as profits skips payroll and extra Medicare taxes, which is really convenient for a lot of people. The misconception I hear over and over again is <clears throat> business owners don't want to be taxed on that extra money left over at the bottom in profits. But what they fail to realize is that it doesn't matter whether that cash sits in the company's bank account or whether you send it back to your personal bank account. You're going to be taxed on it either way, because even though you file uh, a return for the organization, for the corporation, the corporation is not the one paying the taxes on it. They're distributed back to you as the owner. And that's that's a misconception that we have to excuse me, work through with people uh, pretty frequently. Maybe a little right. bit more technical than what you're asking for, but that that's uh, great though. That's a definitely an insight that I haven't heard mentioned. So terrific insight. I appreciate it. Grant, what inspired you to get into this field to begin with? And especially, you know, choosing to work with business owners specifically, how did you get started? I didn't really know all of, of what that looked like initially. Uh, I went to, to college in the Northeast. I went to business school right after that. And then I just wanted to get into finance because it was super interesting to me. I just liked math. I liked how the markets worked. I, I thought it was really interesting. And uh, my, my coursework in college was all economics and finance related. So I, I interviewed around and I got a job at Charles Schwab on one of their trading desks. I worked on a really, really great team with wonderful people and, and um, couldn't have found a better place to really cut my teeth. That was in 2000, uh, let's see, 2007 when I got hired. And so I kind of moved up the ladder there for a few years. Working in a big corporate environment, if you don't make a lot of lateral moves along the way, you kind of get pigeonholed into doing the same thing every day. 
And I was on a really great team. I felt like if I'd made lateral moves, it would kind of alienate the team. And I didn't want to take a pay cut. Long story short, I resigned from my job to start this firm because I felt that if you're looking for help with your finances, your stuff, you probably want somebody who's, you know, checks the base. Uh, checks the basic boxes of being experienced and credentialed and educated and, and sound, you know, competency wise. But you should also want someone who has a fiduciary responsibility to act in your best interest, which means that if you think that a professional does something that benefits them before you, you can go after them through the legal system. You don't have that ability if there is no fiduciary engagement. And by and large, the majority of the financial industry doesn't operate in that manner these days. So I thought you should probably want a fiduciary. You should probably want somebody who's not trying to sell you a product is, is more advice and, and planning oriented. And, and there just weren't a whole lot of, um, you know, if you, if you take a look at all the professionals across the country, like more than 90% don't check those boxes. So I thought it was a business opportunity as I was young, um, didn't have a mortgage or kids yet had some capacity to take risks. So I, I resigned from the job and started this firm because I thought that's what people would, would look for. And after uh, working with a whole bunch of different types of people, I kind of meandered toward working with business owners because this just turned out to be a great opportunity to add value. Um, I've got some expertise and, and knowledge and, and background after you know, working with a bunch of people over the years. So it, it wasn't like we set out to do, you know, work only with business owners on day one. It's kind of evolved into that uh, over the years. Water seeks its own level and you found your specialty and they found you more importantly. So that's, that's terrific. Grant, for business owners and other folks that would like to speak with you listening right now, how can they find you, connect with you and learn more? Yeah, you can check out threeoakswealth.com. That's the uh, firm's site. You can check out my podcast. It's called Grow Money Business. I have a blog that I, I write on, um, not quite as frequently any longer now that my time is a little limited. Uh, it's called Above the Canopy. So all, uh, we're, we're very findable online. You can check out any three of those things. Grant, this has been terrific. I really appreciate you taking the time and sharing with my audience. You shared some terrific insights uh, and I wish you continued success for you and for all of your clients. I appreciate that, Mark. That's very kind of you. Best to you as well. That was Grant Bledsoe. He's the founder of Three Oaks Wealth. And this segment's been brought to you by booksgrowbusiness.com. It's the place where busy professionals get their books done to educate consumers, grow their businesses, and to leave a legacy. That's all for now. I'm Mark Imperial, and thanks for joining me.